welcome to Kate's Tiny House where we are finally working on the interior of the home. I've just recently finished framing up all of the interior walls. So these walls make up the bathroom and the ceiling of the bathroom is also the floor of my bedroom loft. For the entry to the bathroom, I plan to use a pocket door, and this is gonna have to be a custom height, but it's a 24 inch width door. And so this means I have to build my own pocket door, but luckily they make framing kits for pocket doors that will fit the 24 inch door. So we first started with the wall that separates the living room from the bathroom. We started with this wall because it was very straightforward, and the only thing to really be conscientious of was that the shower head will be plumbed through this wall. So we already had the pipes for the hot and cold water coming up. And so being mindful to drill the holes to line up with those, but otherwise the measurements and such match the blueprints that I had. So it was a very easy wall to put together. This was the first time I actually felt more confident with what I was doing because I had already framed walls before. So this was kind of like a, oh yeah, I've done this. This is a skill I've learned. So that was also pretty awesome. <laughs> I had gone ahead and pre-cut all of the links for the pieces of wood we need to uh, put together. And then later Phil, Doug and I worked on assembling it together. Phil mostly made sure that the studs were straight and aligned where we needed them. And then I used the nail gun to nail them all in. So we put up the wall to make sure it looked good. It was plumb and level and things were just doing what they needed to do. We used glue to adhere the footer of the wall to the floor, but then also used construction screws to screw it in. Where it lined up with the back wall did not line up with a stud, so we did have to cut pieces of two by four and screw those in between studs so that the wall would have something to connect to. Then we put together the opposite of that wall, which is just a short wall because the gooseneck comes up to for to act as most of that wall. And so this was a little short thing. So before I cut anything, we first made sure and double checked the height of that wall so that it was level to the wall we just built. And I'm really glad we did that because it was a half inch off of what the plans recommended. So luckily we did that and cut everything to the right size the first time. To assemble that wall, we did the same thing, use glue, construction screws, and it looked good. Then it was time for the pocket door wall. And this one was a little bit tricky. So today I came into the build site so that I can start cutting the pieces for this wall of the bathroom where the pocket door will be. Um, and this box is the pocket door set up essentially. And unfortunately, as I was measuring, I realized that this pipe is going to be in the space where the pocket door needs to go when it's open. So I need to move this guy just like a few like right here, it needs to be here so that the pocket door can slide open and not hit the pipe for the toilet. So that'll be fun. Um, I'm still gonna cut pieces to length, but that'll be an interesting job to fix that guy. And when we put it all together and we lifted it up to align it. Uh, it. That little L part that went on top of the gooseneck was kind of wonky and the bottom wasn't reaching the floor. So Phil took a zippy saw and kind of was just cutting down that little L part to size so that it would rest on top and fall down and, and meet the ground where it needed to go. 
This took a while, but it was better than the alternative, which was to disassemble everything and cut everything to size and put it back together. So we kind of took a shortcut. It was tricky and it was laborious, but we got it done. And then it was time to install the pocket door frame. So I had bought a kit. This kit was built to be cut to size. So the instructions were kind of unclear, but we eventually got through it and figured it out. And it took all the rest of the day to just figure out how to assemble the bars for the frame and putting in the the wheels that will attach to the door. Um, it's soft clothes and it was really cool to just understand the mechanics of the door and how that will all work. So that is all in place. Door installed. With soft clothes. We go, we go, we close the door, we close the door and look at that action. Done. Love it. While Phil and I worked on the pocket door, Doug built some stairs that will go up to the tiny house. And Tess, it took a while for her to figure out the stairs. Tess, come up here. Tess, you can do it. Look at stairs. Good job. But it coaxed her in and now she joins us all the time and it's a delight. Next was the bathroom ceiling, which is also the bedroom flooring. So Phil and I cut all the pieces and then I assembled them all by myself the next day. And that was straightforward. But then putting it up before we could actually put that ceiling up we had to drill a hole in the wall studs because that is where a vent will go for the bathroom so this is a very important vent and it was basically the only option we had and to be able to work in and drill in that hole we needed to wait to put up the floor so we did that and that was kind of tricky because we ran into a couple nails and we had to go through four studs so it was it was a lot just to like figure out how to get the nails out of the way but now there's a hole there for the vent and uh you can see right through it looks great <laughs> i took a trip with my friend wade and phil to get some extra plywood sheathing for the bedroom floor. While we were dropping that off at the barn, we used weight's height and strength to help Phil pull up the bathroom ceiling where it needed to go. Uh, yeah. Here you go. Good job. Woo. <laughs> and then later that day, Phil and I uh, bolted that ceiling to the walls and so now it's very sturdy and it can handle the weight of my mattress as well as me so that is important and it's all level and flush and looking good and yeah this was basically the first project where i was like oh i know pretty much what i'm doing except for the bolts thank you phil um next up will be oh my gosh Next up, we'll be finishing up the plumbing rough-in for the house. So this is any sort of plumbing that will go in the walls. And that's mostly vents for the bathroom, kitchen, and washing machine, as well as the shower head for, as well as the shower head for the shower. So that will all be next. And then mini split installation and electrical, and then insulation, and then interior siding, and it's all coming together. So my goal is to finish this up before next summer. It'll probably be during next summer, let's be honest, but that would be amazing. So I'm trying to be much more ambitious with my timeline so that I can eventually live in this thing. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on more tiny house building adventures. And until next time, bye.